recovery is probably one of the biggest things in terms of athletic performance that can really make or break how you adapt and deal with training, but then also recover and perform on race day. So today we're going to talk about the core principle of what we call the recovery iceberg, which really is the foundations of recovery in terms of sleep, nutrition, hydration, all the big key components that sit under the bottom and how they're more important than the things that you can typically see on social media at the top, like massage guns, recovery, uh, recovery boots, compression, etc. So let's get stuck into the basics of recovery to really take your preparation for training and racing to the next level. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, make sure you consider subscribing down below. It does help the channel grow and I love the support that I've been getting in the comments. All your questions have been great and they've actually helped to build some of the videos that have been coming out. So any questions you do have, please leave them down below because I try and respond to as many as I can. But also they, they lead into some of the videos that I'm going to be creating uh, based on some of your questions, which are probably going to help people who might be thinking it but may not be wanting to ask it or, or a bit shy to ask. Make sure you leave them down below uh, any questions you've got. Like I said, try and get back to as many people as I can, but also it helps the channel in terms of creating some specific content to exactly what you guys want to learn about. Today's video, as I said in the intro, is all about the recovery iceberg and what is recovery, uh, the foundations of recovery, and what do we need to get right. Because a lot of the time we see on social media, we see things like massage guns or recovery boots, compression garments, all of these things, ice bars even that elite athletes are engaging in or, or other people online, influencers, etc., are getting stuck into. But are they actually the foundations of recovery? And it comes down to this principle of the recovery iceberg in that typically when you look at an iceberg, the thing, the part of the iceberg that you can see is a very small percentage of the whole. Um, what is above the water is things like your recovery boots. It's, it's your ice bars, your contrast therapy, so hot, cold, um, massage, um, foam rolling, all of these different implements are the 1%, 2% that you can see above the surface. The key foundations of the iceberg that make up the majority of it are actually down below. And I've got a great graphic uh, explaining this, and this is where I, I really sort of draw the ideas from. Uh, is the, I found this uh, on Twitter, put it up on the screen now. Adam Crook um, put out this a, a little while ago, and it really shows get the 90% right first, all the stuff below the water, the basics, the foundation. You set a solid foundation there. Then the 10% at the top, the little tweaks, those those little things that we can do and, and sort of the fun stuff we talk about when we see recovery uh, are really gonna start to make a bit more of a difference than just using them on your own. And so it comes down to these three key categories, nutrition, hydration, and sleep. And we, we've heard all this before. We know uh, it's the right thing to do, but how can we actually maximize some of these parts? Nutrition, first of all, um, is a really critical part in terms of recovery because we need the fuel into our body, not only to prepare for performance, but then also recover. So we need to be able to get nutrients in, particularly things like carbohydrates are useful, obviously for endurance athletes in particular, but any athlete most accessible available fuel that's going to give us the most uh, available energy in most occasions yes fats are going to be a usable fuel in extreme uh, distance or ultra distance type events but i'm talking the broad spectrum carbohydrates are the, what the body wants to use typically first because it's a lot faster breakdown than the fat but we can still get some quite good high intensity sustained energy um, particularly when we're trying to race to win um, it's all, all very well going out and doing event just plodding along but if you're trying to race to win that's the key distinguishing factor carbohydrates are king so making sure you're fueling up well beforehand, things like getting enough low low GI carbohydrates in uh, two hours to an event or, or prior, um, doing carbohydrate loading might be something you wanna look into. Making sure you're getting carbohydrates throughout the event in the form of high, high GI carbohydrates. That's why we have sports drinks, that's why we have gels, we have lollies, etc., to get us through. But then the critical part from a recovery perspective is what we do post. Uh, and this is something that you can just finally tune. Um, and I've got some rough numbers I want to share with you. I'm going to put it back up on the screen here. Um, you see down the bottom, the from a post-activity perspective, we want to aim for about a four to one ratio of carbohydrate to protein. So what does that what does that mean in terms of a ratio? We're talking about if you're trying to get if you get 100 grams of um, if you get 100 grams of carbohydrates in, we want to be getting four to one. So what does that mean in terms of protein? 25 grams of protein. We want to get this balance because when we get protein in with carbohydrates, it allows us to absorb um, both a little bit more rapidly than if we just went for carbohydrates or if we just went for protein. So there's been some research in terms of if we get some carbs in, that's going to stimulate the uptake of the protein and then the, the resynthesis of protein within the body. If we get some protein, it's also going to help with the carb absorption too. So it kind of, it kind of wins out rather than just going for carbs and you're kind of missing the boat and the protein aspect. Trying to get this in 
not you don't have to smash it down immediately as soon as you cross the finish line as soon as you finish your training session but within a sort of half hour 45 minute window is when we want to start this process we want to try and get things in early so that we can get on top of recovery nice and early the earlier we start to recover the faster we start to recover because we're just starting the clock if you like in terms of recovery a lot um, a lot earlier another a guide to go off is trying to get about 1.5 grams of carb, uh, carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight so we don't have to necessarily get down into the nitty gritty of calculating this every single time we're having something post activity, but it is a good guideline to make sure you're getting enough. Just roughly calculate it. If you're gonna get, um, if you're gonna have something afterwards like a banana and, and, a, and a shake that's got to be a carbohydrates and protein in it, that's probably gonna be more than enough. Having a sandwich or, or just anything in general is gonna anything that's rich in carbohydrates and got some protein in it is gonna be useful to start that recovery process overall. So making sure you're just getting something in is better than nothing. But if you can refine it and work off some of those numbers, uh, you're gonna make it a little bit more refined in terms of maximizing the effect that nutrition can have. Moving on to hydration now. Obviously it's important to hydrate prior to events uh, and just daily throughout the day. But a key thing I wanna sort of emphasize here is some of the recommendations around hydration lead off about 35 mils of water per kilogram per day. So what does that mean? I'm about 65 kilos. That would mean about 2.2 liters of fluid. And that was something that a little bit surprising to me when I read that statistic, because I know personally, I don't necessarily drink that every day, particularly through winter at the moment. I don't feel like I need to drink as much because it's not as hot. I'm not doing as much training because of lockdown at the moment. So I don't feel like I need to drink all the time. But 2.2 liters is actually quite a, quite a fair bit of fluid to get in. And that's just throughout just daily, uh, daily activity, daily training. Obviously, if you're doing more uh, longer distance or bigger sessions, really high intensity sessions, you wanna be drinking a little bit more fluid. So this does need to fluctuate, but it gives you a good starting point in terms of daily hydration will set you up really well for not only recovery to, to keep the blood at a nice consistency to transport nutrients, etc., keep the brain functioning in terms of, obviously, if we start to dehydrate, things can start to slip from a cognitive perspective as well. But what it's gonna do is set you up as long as you're hitting your targets day on day, it's gonna set you up really well leading into a race. The last thing we wanna do is go into a race dehydrated because we know if we're about 4% dehydrated, so not a lot at all, 4% is not massive. In races where we're working at and around lactate threshold, we lose about eight to 9% of our performance. So that's quite a significant drop just by being a little bit dehydrated going in. Obviously ex uh, exaggerated for our longer distance events, if you're dehydrated going into an Ironman, day's gonna be over before it even begins. So nutrition's a, really, uh, nutrition's a really critical part, but hydration as well, making sure you're getting your fluid in, and making sure you're getting some electrolyte in as well. Make sure there's a little bit of salt in there um, in terms of a bit of sodium, magnesium, calcium, um, potassium, all of these uh, little electrolytes are gonna be useful as well. You can get these typically through your nutrition and your diet, but you might wanna look into something like an electrolyte uh, supplement, like a sports drink that's focused mainly on the electrolyte side of things particularly in hotter climates. I use that after hot, hard intensity sessions. Um, I, I like to use like an electrolyte drink because it just tastes a little bit better than just drinking water. But also I know I'm getting some good electrolyte components back into the system as well. Because things like sodium are gonna help you retain a bit of fluid. So it's gonna balance things out in the body. If we're losing too much water, then we're gonna start to lose sodium. Or if we lose too much sodium, we start to lose a lot of water. So th those work hand in hand. If you can balance those out as best you can, it's gonna help with you retaining and getting fluid back into the system a little bit better. And again, that's gonna lead to some ad advanced recovery. The last key component is sleep, and sleep is obviously a critical component for, for whether you're, you're an endurance athlete or any type of athlete, because this is where most of the recovery and the repair process happens. So when we're asleep, we go into a basically a mini shutdown. It allows us to cognitively refresh, so get our mind right, but also from a body perspective, that's where things like the muscle uh, is rebuilding itself and growing and getting bigger. Um, every time we go out and train, we're damaging the body deliberately to then grow and adapt above and beyond. And if we're not getting enough sleep, that process is really inhibited and nutrition and hydration lead into the sleep process because if we've got fuel in the body, we're well hydrated and we have some really good quality sleep, all of it together comes together and, and starts to recover us a lot quicker. So a couple of guidelines around that. We know about eight hours for the average person is typical in terms of what we wanna aim for as an ideal. For athletes, it actually extends up eight to 10 hours is a bit more of our critical range. Why? Because we're doing more work than the typical average person. When I say average person, let's say nine to five job, um, not doing too much either side of that, they're just going to work. The physical demand's not on them. As athletes, we need to have a little bit more sleep because we've got that physical damage we're trying to recover from, as well as the psychological stuff and the cognitive refresh that we need from our work, from the stresses of training, etc., as well. So making sure you're aiming for that. You don't necessarily have to get eight to 10 hours in one bank. If it's not practical for you, that's okay. There's some good research in terms of napping is effective, but napping for only say 45 minutes at a time is much more effective than trying to have a three hour nap in the afternoon. Um, why? Because 45 minutes is roughly sort of one sleep cycle. 
short and sharp. It's just enough to reset and, and get you to go again. But again, the focus should be on getting that bulk of the sleep done sort of overnight, eight to 10 hours when, when it's practical in a, in a single block, give our body as much time to recover as we can. And if you need that top up, because you couldn't quite get that eight to 10, or you just want a little bit of extra because you're in a big training cycle, I know that can happen as well. You just want that extra 45 minutes. Having a nap in the afternoon can actually be really beneficial to then lead you into another training session or recover from an afternoon session even. But just make sure you time it so you're not leaving it too late in the day and you're, you're having a nap and then you're having dinner and then you're having to try to put yourself to sleep again and you can't get to sleep. Make sure you have it early enough that you know, all right, I'm gonna ride this wave out. It's gonna refresh me a little bit for the afternoon and then I can get into my normal sleep as I would at night. Finally, a couple of tips in terms of improving your sleep and a bit of sleep hygiene if you like. Dark room is obviously uh, best. Try to keep the lights uh, down or slowly dim the lights as you're getting closer to when you're gonna go to sleep. Things like staying off electronic devices away from phones, laptops, um, computers, tablets, whatever it is, to, to try and limit as much exposure to light. We wanna try and get the room and environment as dark as possible, because that's gonna induce our natural sleep hormones to, to really drive us into a sleep state and want us to go to sleep a little bit quicker. So bringing those uh, out of the environment or taking them away uh, about 45, 60 minutes before we start to sleep is really gonna accelerate that process of getting to, it, getting to sleep a lot faster. Making sure the room's at a nice temperature, too hot is obviously we, we, common sense. If you're too hot, it's gonna be hard. If it's too cold, it's also gonna be difficult to sleep and you're gonna be uncomfortable either way. Making sure the room is quiet too. It, it can be quite difficult if you're living next to a railway line or a busy city. You might find it's difficult because there's just external noises. So finding some things like you might want to put up some stuff on the wall. You might want to put some um, heavy carpets on the floor to try and sound in the room, things like that, to try and absorb as much sound as you can so you can really um, reduce the amount of sound in there and keep things nice and quiet. There's just some basic tips. There's a few other things you can get into, but that'll get you a really good head start on getting some really good quality sleep. So hopefully you got a little bit out of uh, today's uh, video about the recovery iceberg. Like I said, the bulk of the work is what we can't see under the water, nutrition, hydration, and our sleep. Everything else is just the icing on the cake, using foam rollers, using massage balls, um, getting a massage, re recovery boots or compression boots, whatever it is, it's just a little bit on top. That's not gonna make or break your, your recovery and how we perform. Sleep, hydration, and nutrition will though. Miss, miss anything in those areas or, or, or screw around with them too much. It's really gonna to start to impact what you do in training, which is then gonna impact what you do uh, in your event, in your race, out on the field, whatever type of athlete you are in terms of your athletic performance and sporting performance on the day you need to be ready to go. As always, please leave any questions or comments uh, down below, really appreciate being able to interact with you guys. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button uh, to keep up to date with the latest videos. That is it for today and we'll see you in the next one.